an update on last week's water main break and how you can make sure you are using clean water. And a traffic stopping pull facts that led to police winding up that now on our own day. Good evening, I'm Grady Glover. And I'm Reese Holmes, and welcome to Murrow News 8. Our top story, the water main break has started to affect local businesses even after being fixed. Chipotle was among the businesses that was forced to close on Monday. This happened after Sunday afternoon, a main break started to affect Chipotle was one of these businesses that had to close, like I said earlier, and the break happened Saturday afternoon and brought discolored water and low pressure to areas of the city before being fixed early Sunday morning. The city of Pullman posted this graphic, which shows areas that are advised to boil their water through at least the end of the day today. WSU is not concluded on that map, but some areas of campus are experiencing brown water. The city says discoloration is typically not harmful, but can be flushed out by running the tap for a minute or so. One student, Amelia Crooks, told us she saw brown water coming out of her sink at Northside Hall over the weekend. She decided to go with bottled water for the time being. The city says that they are actively looking into the situation and will update residents as soon as possible. Whitman County deputies have arrested 31-year-old Amber Sitter and 37-year-old Raymond Cooper on drug and gun possession charges. After stopping Sitter in a traffic stop and learning her license was suspended, deputies were led to believe that there may be contraband in the car. After searching the vehicle, deputies found 76 fentanyl pills and two loaded handguns. Both Sitter and Cooper will make their first court appearance on Monday. The Tri-Cities Airport, located in Pasco, reopened this morning after it was forced to close due to the plane fire. According to Pasco Fire Department, the plane was having problems with its landing gear and skidded before the fire started. There were no injuries from the fire. The suicide rate in rural America is far worse than in urban America. WSU researchers are looking at new ways to address this issue. The initiative is inspired by the university's commitment to serving rural communities. WSU Extension has created several programs that have led to a big U.S. Department of Agriculture grant to expand rural suicide prevention to 13 western states and four U.S. territories. Pullman Regional Hospital and WSU's Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine create a family medicine residency program to provide advanced medical training and, and new doctors to the community. The three-year training program is for medical school grads and will see and treat patients in residency center in the summer of 2023. Welcome three new physicians every, it will welcome three new physicians every year and nine residents by 2026. The Whitman County Humane Society will once again be operational starting October 1st. The Humane Society had a staffing issue after six employees resigned, leaving only one employee left. During this time, the shelter also renovated the facility. According to the president of the Humane Society Board, John Musselwhite, there is a new shelter manager, office manager, and two full-time employees. Coho salmon fishing is allowed again on the Lower Snake River in Washington. The Department of Fish and Wildlife opened the season for silvers, otherwise known as coho salmon, near Clarkston and all the way up into Oregon. Two adult cohos can be caught per day. There is no limit on jacks or young salmon. Silver season on the snake runs through October, and fish managers are expecting a run of 12,000 silver salmon to cross on the Snake River. The North Central Idaho wheat farmers just got a little happier. The Idaho Wheat Commission and the Taiwan Flour Mills Association signed a $576 million trade agreement. The two entities agreed to sell 1.8 million metric tons, or 66.1 million bushels of wheat, between 2023 and 2024. Updates on Hurricane Fiona and how violent it is its past the Turks and Caicos was. And Allison Martinez gives us a look at the rest of the week's weather forecast. Next, on your visit.
On Monday, City Circuit Court Judge Melissa Finn overturned the conviction of Adnan Syed for his role in the murder of his former girlfriend, Hai Min Lee. Judge Finn made her decision on the grounds that the prosecutors argued that Syed's conviction was flawed, saying they lacked confidence in the integrity of the verdict. Syed was ordered to be released without bail after serving 23 years in prison, and charges of murder, robbery, kidnapping, and false imprisonment were overturned. Hurricane Fiona was upgraded to a Category 3 storm last night as it hit Turks and Caicos. The eye of the storm passed close to the capital city of Grand Turks and recorded 115 miles per hour winds, which caused the water to nearly rise 8 feet in some areas. Prem 2 News reports that the storm was forecasted to weaken before hitting the island, but now is expected to pick up steam and become a Category 4 hurricane before hitting the island of Bermuda. Hurricane Fiona is not expected to impact the U.S. mainland at this time. The Spokane City Council unanimously passed an updated safe air shelter ordinance yesterday. Previously, the air would have had to reach an AQI of 250, which is classified as very unhealthy for safe air shelters to open. Now, shelters will be open when the AQI gets to 150, an unhealthy level. And now that the air in Pullman has cleared up, let's head over to Allison for the weather. Thanks, guys. It has been beautiful weather that we have been having recently. Today, we have been experiencing a high of 75 with a low of 42. The sun will be setting at 6.36 p.m. tonight, and that beautiful weather will continue into tomorrow, where we have a high of 76 with a low of 45. Later in the day, we'll be experiencing some evening showers, but we'll get into that a bit later. Moving on to our five-day, moving on to across the state of Washington, here in eastern Washington, we have been experiencing some very warm temperatures, and those have really been consistent across the entire state. Over in, over in Pullman, we have had temperatures of 75, moving into 75 through Spokane, and very warm. We'll have our warmest throughout the entire state at 80 in the Tri-Cities, and those warm temperatures will once again continue at 74 in Seattle and all the way up to 79 in Olympia. The warmest, the coolest across the state is going to be in Seattle, unfortunately, for those UW students. Moving on to our five-day forecast. Uh, today, or tomorrow, Wednesday, we will have a high of 76 degrees with a low of 45 degrees. That 76 is perfect for our last day of summer. That is our last full day of the summer season. And almost right on cue, tomorrow night around 11 p.m., we will be seeing some showers that will be occurring throughout Pullman. And those showers will continue on to Thursday, and they'll stop at about 11 a.m. in the morning. Crazy how that happens, right, with the change of the seasons. So make sure when you're walking to class on your early morning class on Thursday, you wear a hoodie, you keep covered, Umbrellas don't really seem to be a thing around here, so just make sure you keep covered and keep protected. Moving on to Friday, thankfully those temperatures will raise back up to 67, continuing on to Saturday and Sunday. Perfect for the football game. Enjoy those warm weather and on to Sunday. And that's it for our five-day forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Allison. WC Volleyball plays in the first Apple Cup matchup of this year. And WC Soccer has been absolutely on fire recently. Out in the middle of the special rules, Derek Tosh has the story next to the one hour music.
the WSU volleyball team is facing off against their cross-state rival, the number 18 ranked Washington Huskies, this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in Seattle. WSU will be looking to continue their strong start to the season in their first Pac-12 matchup of the year. The Cougars enter the match with an 8-3 record in non-conference play, and the Huskies sit at 8-2. In football news, Washington State linebacker Dayon Henley won Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week. Henley had what some, call, what some have called a nuclear performance with 13 tackles, three of which were sacks in Saturday's game against Colorado State. Henley will look to continue his dominant play this Saturday against Oregon. The WSU women's and men's golf teams both had impressive showings in their respective tournaments over the weekend. The women head into the final day of the Badger Invitational tied for fourth place after collectively scoring even par during Monday's round. The team teed off at 7 a.m. for the at 7 a.m. this morning for the final round of the tournament. The men's team finished yesterday's play tied for third place before play was suspended due to darkness. Second round play resumed at 7.15 a.m. and the third round began at 9.05 as play is currently still in session. With a win over St. Mary's on Sunday, the WSU soccer team had a 6-1 had a and one record and is currently enjoying a six-game winning streak. The Cougars' <laughs> hot start can be credited to their aggressive offense that shoots a six best 23 shots per contest and to their leading goal scorer, Margie DeTrizio, who has seven goals on the season. The Cougars will play uh, will open Pac-12 play this Friday in Corvallis against or the Oregon State Beavers. Thank you so much, Derek. Today is National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Find out where you can get a slice of the pie next on Euro News 8. That's right, it's National Pepperoni Pizza Day. Whether you're looking at Stella's uh, or Porchlight or even good old Domino's, you can always find a great slice of pizza in Pullman. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed anything on any of these broadcasts, you can always find us on the YouTube channel. Thank you and have a good day.